Ang climate change is very unpredictable. We need to anticipate the unanticipated. We need to expect the un unexpected. Ang kalamidad po ay hindi natin malaman kung kailan darating. So at least, uh, mas day ng maagap ang masipan. Management by example. So this uh, would trickle or this could have a trickling effect on the business establishments and the communities all over the city. Yung mga tao na intindihan din nila, yung hindi nagpa-participate ng uh, uh, proper waste disposal noon, ngayon nagpa-participate na sila kasi naintindihan nila kung ano talaga yung may tutulong ng malinis na uh, kapaligiran mismo sa kanilang mga uh, pamilya. Huwag talagang tayo na uh, nagmamalasarit sa ating inang kalikasan. May sana tayong lahat ng mauguno, magtulog-tulog, magsama-sama para magpangaragaan natin ang ating kalikasan. Higit sa lahat ay ating uh, isaayos natin ang pamahalan ng masura sa ating mga kasama. Well, we call it the yellow-green flag because it's more than just an environment-friendly or a climate-smart way of doing things, which is what green stands for. Uh, you know, a green building, a green infrastructure, a green design, a green approach. But when we say yellow-green, because we are tuwitnadaan, liberalism, it symbolizes for us freedom and openness and dialogue and uh, the participation of as many sectors as is possible in a discussion of all our issues that concern us, especially as, it, as this is uh, on climate change and the environment, how we must adapt, how we must be able to manage well uh, the resources of the earth. Because best practices takes us out of just the framing of theory, meaning or concepts, meaning it's not just climate change as we understand it in scientific data and models, it's not just what you read or hear about, it's not just documentaries like The Inconvenient Truth, it's not just about, you know, a doc a BBC or uh, the Discovery Channel or National Geographic. It's about what people are actually able to do at their level, with their communities, with their local governments, with their leaders and with the different stakeholders of any community, of any grassroots setting. And so best practices is really seeing how things are done, how adaptation is really carried out and lived out on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you're an upland community, a forest-based or a river community, or a coastal, urban, rural, you're able to adapt to the challenges faced, we face, that are posed by and we face coming out of climate change and climate change impacts. integrated solid waste management facility ng Teresa Usahi ay nagsimula way back no, magsimula man ng kulay ng aming uh, past mayor ay pinilitan ng incumbent si Mayor Redel de la Cruz that's way back in 2004 so uh, gusto ni Mayor Redel de la Cruz na i-implement yung Republic Act 9003 which is also known as Ecological Solid Waste Management Act 2000 Nakalagay ng Teresa ni ng Portless Municipality during those times ay medyo mahirap na magtayo ng sanitary landfill. So, device, so we devised ways paano ba natin magagawa na makapunta doon sa zero waste management. First thing first, ni-rehabilitate namin yung basurahan kasi open down site. Ito yung first 2005. Dito sa Teresa, way back in 2005, ang aming waste generation dito 
uh, for a day ay 5.7 tons of mixed waste. After two years of uh, waste management implementation, ang aming basura ay naging 3.5 tons na lang of segregated waste na. Ano ang significance nun? Ang significance nun is uh, ang nakalagay kasi sa batas. All local government units or municipality na mag-implement ang waste management, they have to reduce their waste by as much as 25 percent of their waste for the first five years of their implementation. Tapos ay 3 percent per year hanggang makuha nila yung zero waste management. Bakit ito ang pinagtuunan ko ng pansin? Dahil una, nasabi ko nga, ito ang hinihingi ng Republic Act 9003. At the same time, isa sa problema ng bayan is poverty or unemployment. So, kumbaga ano, ay uh, makakatulong itong proyektong ito. So, ito na nga, nakapag, uh, nakapag uh, ano ako ng mga tao dito. Then, um, yun na, nabigyan ko ng trabaho. So, hindi na masyado bang palaasa sa namumuno sa bayan. At least, eh, kumikita na sila on their own. Ipapakita ko naman sa'yo ngayon ay eh, paggawa ng papel na uling. Ano? So, katulad itong papel na ito, discarded paper, na nanggagaling sa mga opisina, eskwelahan, o anumang mga establishmento dito sa bayan ng Teresa. So, ang papel, ibababad lang sa tubig overnight. So, malambot na yan. And then, right after niyan, uh, ilalagay natin yung uh, halos puno isang pail na tinurog na papel. Ahaluan lang natin ng uh, nilutong gawgaw no? na magsisibing as binder. Then right after na may uh, ano to? May insert. So yan na. Ikokompress yan. Para sa ganun ay uh, makompress ng gusto, magpiga. And then ito na yung end product. Kaya lamang, ibibilad ito ng apat hanggang limang araw para pwede nang gamitin pang gatong. So, papel na uling. So, ito yung mga na-sort kang ina na si Toy na talagang wala na siyang mga hard object. Ipipid dito sa machine na ito. Kung tawagin itong machine na ito, pulverizing machine. So, na pulverized plastic, ito na yung result. E di pang may mas pino dito. No? So, kaya dito sa Teresa, hindi nire-regulate or naibaba ng plastic dahil meron kaming napagagamitan na kung saan itong mga pulverized plastic na ito, pwede namin maihalo sa paggawa ng mga concrete products tulad ng hollow blocks, paving blocks, at iba't iba pang mga concrete products. Ang idea ng ito ay uh, nakita o nalaman namin sa pamagitan ng pag-introduce ng mga taga-UP UP student, engineering student na pwede pala na may paggamitan yung mga pulverized plastic and styrofoam na kung saan minimix namin ito sa paggawa ng mga concrete products katulad ng mga hollow blocks, paving blocks na kung saan yan na ibebenta na namin ngayon actually ang um, Pasig River Banks dito nag-order sa amin ng bricks na nailatag nila along the river banks. Dapat nating itili, hindi lang para makapag-comply tayo rin sa sinasabi natin batas ang Republic Act 9003, kundi talaga kailangan na sa panahon ito. Dahil na rin sa nakikita natin ang problema, sa tuwi na sa Metro Manila, yung karating na bayan, ay nakikita natin na pagka lumating ang tagulan at uh, bumabaha, Ang pangunahing problema kung bakit nagkakalag ang mga drain system ay dahil na rin sa mga plastic na nakakalat doon sa nasa aming mga. Kaya nga kami ay binigyan namin ng pahalaga kung paano magkaroon ng segregation sa atin sa bayan ng Teresa. Magamat hindi naman talaga kami 100% na nai-implement yung segregation dahil hindi naman natin talaga maiyahan yung eh, mga pasaway ng mga mamamayan Eh, sinisika pa rin namin na sa pumagita ng uh, tamang uh, uh, information dissemination sa tulong ng mga 
pabrika dito sa Teresa at ibang uh, NGOs na sinihimok namin yung ating mga kababayan na makiisa sa proyekto ng ating pamahalaan ang tamang pamahalaan ng masyari. Panapanahon ng pagkakataon May babalik ba ang kahapon? Yeah, first, uh, I would like to uh, stress that Elbayog is one of the largest city. Uh, we're third uh, next to uh, Dabao and Puerto Princesa. So it's composed of 157 barangays with a population of more or less 183,000 uh, people. In terms of uh, disaster risk management, first the city had uh, uh, created an office, natawag namin City Disaster Risk Management uh, Management Office, headed by uh, a department head. So, yun ang uh, namamahala sa pagbibigay ng information sa mga barangay in case may darating na mga kalamidad. Uh, isa sa mga programa rin namin ang uh, magbigay ng mga informasyon. Uh, we have already identified the geo-hazard uh, uh, places sa buong uh, uh, lungsod ng Galbayog at lahat ng mga taong nakatira doon ay nabigyan na namin ng notice. Yung office namin of many programs and projects with regards to disaster management. Number one yung ginagamit namin na approach sa barangay is the PDRA. Uh, yung PDRA natin is uh, disaster risk adjustment and risk mapping. Inalam natin sa mga barangay ano talaga ang talagang common sa kanila. And in fact, kaya yung lahat ng sector ay involved dito. Dahil mga tanong na, mga tanong natin sa kanila, ano ang nangyayari sa kanila noon at ano ang nangyayari ngayon. Doon nalaman natin kapag para yung ano natin yung, yung approach sa kanila at saka yung tulong, alam natin sino ang da, sa anong tulong ang unang tulungan, sino ang, tulong, ang unang tulungan. We consider this one as the best tool for disaster management. We are participatory disaster risk assessment and risk mapping. In fact, 157 parang guys, nasa ano na kami ngayon, nasa 92. Yan yung ginatawag na LQs, Local Flood Early Warning System. O yung flood ang minaabot ng mga barangay, nabilagay kami ng mga manual water level gauge. Ang naging basya nila, kung kailan sila tatakbo, kung kailan sila aalis sa kanilang mga bahay. Meron kami yung manual na ginawa dahil hindi natin makaay yung electronic eh. Mas may kamahalan. Meron kami yung telemetered, uh, bigay yan sa amin ng isa rin namin agency. Kaya na kapag bigay na kami yun sa barangay, ng forecast. Ano ba ako bukas kung may ilan ba o wala na kapagbigay na kami to the automatic water station na nandito sa amin. At the same time, mayroon din kami yung tinatawag na yung tawag nito, yung orientation at saka uh, interaction ng rest reaction management at saka rescue sa campus. Mayroon din kami uh, every, every Saturday, mayroon kami ng radio program. One hour, nine, nine in the morning up to ten. Uh, every Saturday, meron kami yan sa radio natin ito. Kaya, para may paabot sa mga tao what we are doing and what we are going to do in case of any occurrence of uh, hazard. Ito yung mga kilawitan namin sa mga sa environment and disaster pollution. Una-una, bilang sa mga kagawitan, ikaw kami ng mga nakawag ng mga Uh, training and seminars po sa Kalbayog. Yung pakinong patuloy tayo din ng ating man, Kalbayog, inibog makita. Meaning, Kalbayog, I love you. Dahil dyan lang sa patuloy ka na yan, kung iano pa natin, ilaboy dyan, pag mahal mo yung lugar mo, you will do everything because you love, you love the place. Kaya ang ginawa rin namin tema, main disaster consciousness man, ang ginawa rin namin is disaster management. Everybody's concerned. Hindi lahat ng sektor kasi involved dito eh. Dahil we are an island, we talk of sustainability. You have to protect and enhance G2. 
genetic resources. So, i-explain na mo sa kanila na kailangan talagang i-protect natin yung kalikasan natin. Nakita ko yung potential ng because I also do snorkeling. So, mayroon akong nakita ng mga areas doon na maganda pa. May natira pa. Because you know, before, talagang yung tao walang pakialam sa kalikasan. Parang pat yung dynamite fishing. Ganon. Tapos, walang regulation ba masyado. So, nangyari, nung makita kung may natira pa so yun nag-initiate kami na mag-establish ng mga marine sanctuaries nilitipay namin yung mga areas so we were able to you know establish uh, almost six marine protected areas and then nagkataon na rin uh, with, with this uh, partnership with the uh, Plan International uh, I would say formula success of Francisco was the partnership with an NGO, like Plan International, uh, malaking tulong siya sa akin. Maganda yung beaches namin, yung, uh, of course, we have this lake, we have hundreds of caves, so, nakita ko na dapat mabigyan ng importansya yung environment. Tapos, malaking challenge, as far as uh, environment is concerned, dahil, hindi pa masyado na intindihan ng tao na what is environment, no? Pero, tuusin, it's a source of life. Land, air, and water. You need to protect. So, yun ang talagang malaking challenge. Kaya, ginawa namin, may mga translated to local dialect para maintindihan ng tao. May organization kami about disaster reduction. So, kami rin ang nag-organize ng Barangay Disaster Rest Reduction Management Committee in every barangay. Pagkatapos namin na, na-orient sila, nagtanda kami ng Barangay Typhoon, Barangay Bay Typhoon Drill Contest na tinalihan ng 15 barangay. So, doon sa contest ay sinigil namin or Sinisimulate ang process ng kung merong disaster, kaya ng typhoon. So, ano ang gagawin ng mga ng council para sa mga tao dyan sa community. So, unang-una, uh, with the help of the Climate Change Commission naman, tinuturuan kami for paano yung mag- vulnerability assessment doon sa 15 barangays to assess the vulnerability of uh, per sector or ano yung exposed to to hazards, to climatic hazards. So, ang um, ginawa namin is meron din kami uh, kinuha ng mga DRR advocators or ngayon ginawa na namin DRR at CCA advocators. Sila yung mga retired teachers na sila yung tagaturo or nag nag-educate doon sa grassroots level. We are more on prevention doon sa mga programs under the own sa, under sa prevention. So, una mo na pinano namin ngayon is capacity building. So, we have to capacitate the marginal groups, the vulnerable groups. So, hindi lang kami nagkakanak ng mga water and search rescue training sa sa mga sa meron na kasi kami binuo na Kamotis Island Emergency Response Team so tinatap rin namin yung mga kabataan yung youth out of school youth inorganize namin yung mga out of school youth you know we're two years now for the implementation of battle for the brain skills and talent na yung mga bata ma-express nila yung Uh, how deep is their understanding on the RRCCA through contest? Alipa, your poster making, slogan, the RR jingle, role play, role play lang namin. Tapos sa, munis- uh, sa barangay level, yun, magkakandak ng contest para ma-upgrade yung knowledge. At the same time, ma-evaluate namin yung uh, how ready the barangay is. So, ganun yung more. Doon kami papal. Kasi wala kami masyadong nire-response na disaster. The environment is important for you, like me, because I believe that the environment are natural barriers to hazards, of course, specifically natural hazards. So, 
it is one thing where I can start small, maybe just through the environment, planting trees or other activities. I can help a little in my own little way. I would just like to encourage all the youth to get involved in disaster reduction. Tina sorbi ko, tina nung ko sa DNR, ganon kalaki yung timberland namin. Nung malaman ko, it's more than 1,000 hectares. So sabi ko, how how many trees and dapat pwede natin itanin dito? Sabi ng DNR, probably ma 2 million ko. Okay, that's it. Start targeting natin 2 million trees. Tapos uh, sa opisa, sabi nila, matin dito, so, kung 2 million trees, we need to plant 1,800 a day. Oh so, no, hindi natin ganun tingnan. Sabihin natin, 50 trees per family per year because we have 9,000 households. So, kung 50 trees per year per household, so, mamimit tayo yung target ng trees. So, mas magaan kung tingnan mo apat na kahoy isang buwan, bawat pamilya. We start on those who are willing. Start lang kami ng isa. Organize namin. Nilagyan namin ng activities, tapos may mga incentive pa, and then may criteria na before they can avail our financial assistance, they throw an award, no? award system, na mayroong criteria, they have to comply the criteria. Like for example, they must segregate the waste, they must uh, have backyard garden, they, they must uh, meet once a month. So, the criteria nga, basic lang tayo. Then, naintindihan naman nila na lahat pala ng criteria, sila rin ang kanilang kanilang kinama. Climate change. Ano bla ini? Ano bla ning concerns ang kada ibo? People think it's very scientific and technical. Very hard to understand. Very hard to fathom. Pero, if you simplify it, climate change is about our everyday lives. Climate change is about the air we breathe. Climate change is about the water we drink. Climate change is about the food we eat and we take. Climate change also is a factor, I believe, in everything we have. More than four years na siguro. Si yung cost of electricity dito sa Inilo ay pinakamahal yata sa buong bansa kung hindi sa buong Asia maabot ng almost 13 pesos per kilowatt hour kaya para sa akin kahit na 5% na lang yung masave ko sa electricity malaking bagay makakatulong ka sa sa kalikasan at saka siyempre mabuhasan na rin yung binibigay natin sa electric company eh, na marami na rin pera. So, yung mga kaibigan ko, sinasabihan ko na kung ano yung advantage ng solar panel at saka alam mo naman yung mga ilonggo eh, kung conservative yan. Eh, basta't makatipid, eh, magtitipid. At saka tuloy dito sa city, eh, marami na rin install ng solar panel. Kagaya ng city hall. Uh, first and foremost, we practice uh, by example. So what we did was to start with our city hall. Uh, the Ilo Ilo City Hall building is the first government green building in the country today. Uh, in this uh, city hall building, we have uh, air conditioning units that are solar power assisted. Our uh, lights are not fluorescent lights or fluorescent bulbs, but we use tea lights which are energy saving. We have uh, big windows that allows natural light to come in so that uh, on a nice weather, we switch off uh, lights. And uh, of course, we have uh, water harvesting. We have a big cistern at the, beneath the city hall that collects all the rainwater. And we do this, uh, we recycle water. We use this for our toilet and it passes through a uh, treatment uh, plant or treatment facility rather. And it recycles water back to the toilets. What we did was to pass a city ordinance 
providing incentives uh, on uh, tax breaks on uh, individuals who put uh, environmentally uh, friendly uh, equipments or uh, machineries in, in their respective buildings or their respective residential houses. So there's an ordinance and it is, uh, uh, there is a, a degree on how they could avail on, on uh, this uh, ordinance on tax incentives. And uh, we were talking about the uh, hospital waste. We have signed a uh, agreement with a private uh, corporation uh, to put up uh, a treatment uh, facility in uh, our uh, sanitary landfill site uh, so that uh, it would be a less burden for the city government on the putting up of such uh, facility because we know that government doesn't really have enough uh, resources and funds to put up such kind of facility and we should go into uh, uh, partnership with the private sector and uh, so that we could uh, implement this uh, uh, wastewater treatment program uh, for the city of Italy. We are honored and we are proud to share that we have a local law or what is called an ordinance giving incentives for entities and business entities that use renewable sources of energy to power their establishments whether it be solar, whether it be wind, whether it be whatever form of renewable energy and this is to entice our business sector and also individuals who can afford to use uh, renewable energy. We cannot stay in this position forever. So to ensure that the programs are continuing and sustainable, this should become a policy. That is why the city or the LGU must come up with an environmental code. And it should be passed in the city council and it should have a period, like for a, say, a period of 10 years. And uh, revisions are going to be made after that 10-year period. That is the preservation and protection of the environment of the city. Iloilo City experienced uh, big flooding uh, way back in 2008. Uh, there were 10 feet high uh, waters that rose in just 15 minutes and covered almost half of the city and uh, with this we have initiated uh, several climate change initiatives uh, to address uh, these concerns. We continuously monitor our programs especially on uh, our pride and that is the Ilo Ilo River Rehabilitation. Uh, what we did was to create a council that is composed of uh, the academe, the civil society, the private sector, uh, the government, the national government agencies, the office of Senator Franklin and Guidon with him attending monthly we conduct meetings on the, the, and uh, we get updates on uh, the initiatives that we're doing from a river that was almost dead. Uh, of course, when you have a dead river, uh, flower, uh, uh, water would not flow. So if uh, water doesn't flow because it's blocked, then it will cause flooding and uh, it will give us again a big problem. So with the initiatives that we have done, we have cleared the river, we have cleaned it up, and now uh, our, uh, uh, our water, it goes out to the uh, river. Uh, and goes out to the sea. So this is a gift that we could bring, that we could give to our children, our children's children. Mga bata talagang eager silang mag, mag river clean up dahil instead na mahihiya sila, nag enjoy pa sila. Ang taas ng latak, ang taas ng dumi, abot tuhod, pero dahil gustong gusto nila na maglinis talaga ng estero, Yung city mayor natin, si Mayor Jed Patrick Mabilog, pumunta rin dito. 
sinabi niya sa amin na kailangan magiging from heart, from mind, and from soul yung gagawin naming paglilinis ng estero. Pombong is famous because of Tima Pans, because it produces vinegar. So, ang Pombong is named, is, uh, is, is a brand name of our town. So, we have so many legislation supporting the brand of Sukong Pombong. We deregulate the pass laws, and we're regulating uh, the cutting of the nipas. As municipal uh, mayor of Pombong, and then I became um, uh, the national president of the legal municipalities of the Philippines. It is one of my banner program na to, uh, to ask the Senate and the House uh, to include the municipal waters in the computation of Kira. In 1,419 municipalities that I am representing, I am serving as the national president, around 832 are coastals. You see, the, basic, the, the, the basis of computation of internal revenue allotment is uh, population and area. In Pombong, say for instance, we are a coastal municipality. We are uh, 4,464 hectares in area, but uh, the municipal water is excluded. So our municipal water is about 6,000 hectares, wherein uh, eh, all the major uh, and important sources of livelihood and, uh, and uh, aquaculture potentials are here. So, ang laki-laki ng inaasahan namin doon sa municipal water namin. Samantalang sa, sa upland, even the virgin forests are included in the computation of era. Why not include municipal water where in napakaraming source of livelihood na nagagaling doon? Especially, it will help the coastal barangays and coastal municipalities in their, in their everyday living. We have uh, intensive uh, mangroves reforestation here in the uh, municipality because uh, th those were uh, dual pur uh, purposes or multiple purposes. Uh, it will, uh, it will, uh, it will strengthen the dikes of the coastal. I mean, uh, they will uh, be depending. Uh, the, the dikes will be depending from uh, the people from floods, from erosion. At tapos, uh, it will also enhance uh, harvest because it will serve as sanctuary for the fish, sanctuary for for uh, for other living organisms in the in the aquaculture uh, opportunities, you know? aquaculture area. So yung bigla ang pagtaas ng tide at bigla ang uh, pagbaha, mapakalaki nung maitutulong nung, nung mangroves sa uh, um, uh, reforestation na ito. Ano? Patitibayin nito yung mga pilapil namin, puprotektahan kami sa mga masyadong malalakas na agos, didepensahan ng mga barangay nito at saka mga households. Ano? So napakalaking bagay din ito doon sa tinatawag nating disaster Risk Reduction Management Council. Ano? Kaya uh, ito ay multi-purpose at ito rin ay livelihood purpose. Ano? Kasi uh, we are known for vinegar uh, production and uh, nipa is uh, also a mangrove. So, ibig sabihin nun, pag marami kaming nipa mangroves, marami kaming production ng vinegar. Uh, we, we do some uh, uh, le uh, legislation uh, for this, such as yung we prohibit conversion of uh, NIPA farm into PISPAN. Sa aming uh, risk reduction council ay nag-convene na po ang uh, new administration at yung mga barangay captain kung saan ang uh, early preparedness po ng uh, aming uh, bayan ay inaanda na po namin sa mga typhoon na darating po dito sa aming bayan. So ang sanguniang bayan po ay uh, patuloy na umaksyon sa mga kalikasan, pangalaga ng kalikasan at sa paghahanda ng mga kalikasan dito sa aming bayan. Ang masabi ko lang, with this uh, changing climate, putting people first, you will never go wrong. Mga kabataan ngayon, na lalaki at yung susunod sila. Baga, matuto sila na mag mga laga rin sa kalikasan. Dahil sila ang makikinabang nito. At bukod ron, yung kabuhayan namin, yung kabuhayan dito sa Bulacan, eh sa kalinisan ng dagat, sa kalinisan ng kapaligiran, yan tumutubo yung mga kabuhayan. So what is important is that the leadership of the LGU uh, creates trust 
among its people. Once there is trust, you will find people empowerment, you will find uh, people support, and you will have people cooperation. And the environmental program and initiative will become a lot easier to implement. And so to me, yellow-green is really about representing good governance, the liberal ideas of and principles of freedom to information, the understanding of our right to human security, to be free from disasters, that we could, in fact, if not prevent, at least be able to effectively adapt to. So yellow and green is a representation of the governance that is also free and open and fair and transparent and accountable vis-a-vis -vis environmental and climate change issues and concerns and plans and programs. So that's what yellow-green is.